Hi everyone, welcome back. In my previous videos, we have discussed about the category and logarithmic axis types of syncfusion angular charts. Now, in this video, I am going to show you how to visualize the angular charts with numeric values at the x and y axis. So, before looking onto it, let me show you a simple real-time example now to give a brief overview about the numeric axis. Here, look at this column series chart that shows the runs scored by the teams England and West Indies and compare their runs between the overs 16 and 20. So, you can notice this chart displaying the numeric values at both the x and y axis to display the score comparison of two different teams based on specific overs. So, here in this case, I can use the numeric axis type at the x-axis and y-axis to populate the over and run values like this. And I can also enhance the appearance of x-axis with other customizable elements like axis labels and axis range. Now, let's see how to write code to add the numeric axis to the chart using my existing application. As I have already explained about how to add a simple angular chart of syncfusion to the Angular application, please listen to my Getting Started video to know the basic steps. And you can also find its reference link in the description part below. First, let me open my existing application and I will start adding the column series chart to it. So, I will open the app module file and import the column series service from Syncfusion EJ2 Angular Charts package and inject the scene within the providers section to start using the column series chart type. Here, to add the numeric access to the chart, it is not necessary to import any additional servers from Syncfusion chart package since it is the default access type. Now, I will show you how to make a few changes on my existing chart code to customize the x-axis and y-axis with numeric values. So, let me open the app component HTML file here, to have better clarity, I am removing the existing chart code properties that are defined during the getting started part and simply retain the single series chart code with a single e-series tab. Now, as I have planned to display the runs taken by two different teams on the same chart, therefore, I may need to define two series on this chart code to visually compare their runs. For that, I am going to add one more series to the chart code by defining another e-series tab. And now, set its series type as column for both the series as I am going to use two column series on same chart. Now, let me start populating the data for chart. As I have planned to display the over by over score comparison of two different teams, so let me open the app component class and declare two variables data and data1 object. Now, I will assign this England cricket data to data object and the West Indies cricket data to data1 object. So, here the bowling overs are assigned to the x-axis and the relevant runs scored to the y-axis. Now, let me bind this data object to the data source property of first series and data1 object to the data source property of second series. Also, I will map the data source fields overs to the xname property of both the series and runs field to the Y name property of both the series. The next thing is, I need to set the title for chart. So, let me declare a variable chart title and set its value as England versus West Indies to convey information about what the chart data is trying to illustrate. Now, I will assign this chart title to the title property of the chart. Okay, the basic settings to display multiple column series on the chart is done now. And the next important step here is, I need to define the value type as double for x-axis to display the decimal values across it and the y-axis will simply display the integer values. So within the app component class, let me declare a public variable x-axis, add the value type property and set its value as double within it. Now I will assign this object to the primary x-axis property of the chart. So here. We can view the column series chart with the numeric x-axis and y-axis displaying the bowling overs across the x-axis and runs across the y-axis in the chart. Also, the chart is displayed with the main title as England vs West Indies. Now, 
Let me set the title for x axis and y axis of the chart. So, within the app component class, let me set the appropriate title for x axis as depth overs within the x axis object. And for y axis, let me declare a variable y axis and set its title as runs. As this x axis variable is already mapped to the primary x axis property of the chart, so let me bind this y axis object to the primary y axis property of the chart. So here you can view the chart output with the relevant x axis title as step overs and the y axis title as runs. Now I will show you how to define the numeric axis properties one by one. In this chart output, you can see the x axis where the bowling overs are ranging from 15.5 to 20.5, but the data values defined in the data source ranges between 16 and 20. So, if I need to view these data points more accurately, then I may need to set the custom range on x axis. To set the custom range within the app component class, I need to add two additional options minimum and maximum within the x axis object. Here, I have set the minimum value as 15 and the maximum value as 21 as the bounding over values in the data source that ranges from 16 to 20. As I have already mapped this x axis object to the primary x axis property of the chart, now let me show you the chart output directly. So here, you can view the chart output with the custom range on x-axis that ranges from 15 to 21. Like the minimum and maximum options, I can also set the custom interval for the x-axis. Here, the axis interval is 0.5 by default as per the data source values. So, to set the custom interval for the x-axis, I need to make use of the interval property. Therefore, within the app component class, let me set the interval property as 1 so that axis interval shows the integer values instead of decimal values. Now when you look at the chart output which shows the numeric axis with the axis interval 1 so that the axis label displays the values as 15, 16, 17 and so on. Well, the next important property is label format with which you can make the chart axis label to convey more information. Using this property, I can set either the default globalized label format or the customized formats. So let me show you the table now to have a glance on supported globalized label formats. Say for example, if I set the label format to C1 on a particular axis, then a currency symbol will be appended to the axis values and also those axis values will be rounded to one decimal point like this. Now, I will show you how to set the custom label format on the numeric axis. So open the app component class and within the x axis object, let me set the label format property with the template value. And now you can view the chart output that displays the axis labels with the custom value as 15th over, 16th over and so on. Look at the axis label at edge which is partially hidden as it has been placed outside the chart area. So, to move the axis label at edge inside the chart area, I need to add the edge label placement property in the numeric axis. Now, to set edge label placement property, let me open the app component class and within the x axis object, I need to set the edge label placement property to shift. And now, you can view the chart output that displays the axis label at the edge inside the chart area. Okay. So far we have discussed about the properties which are frequently used in the numeric axis. Now let me show you other properties like range pairing and grouping separator properties. Before setting range pairing, let me explain you what is range pairing. When you want to set some padding space on the maximum and minimum extremes of the axis range, you can go with setting range pairing. There are 5 types of padding values like none additional, round, normal, and auto. Okay, now let me set the range padding for the axis range. Here, to have a better clarity, I'm going to remove these properties from x-axis object and define the range padding option as none, so that the chart displays the minimum and maximum extremes based on the cricket data. Say for example, if I change it to additional, then you can look at the difference in this output page 
where the interval value of the axis 1 will be padded to the minimum and maximum extremes of the axis. So this is how the range padding works. Alright, the final important property is the grouping separator property with which you can display the thousand separator on the chart. Usually, a comma is used to separate the numeric values in thousands, but here you can simply enable this grouping separator property by setting its value as true within the chart code. Now, let me show you an example with this grouping separator in action. Here, the data values are defined in thousands on the y-axis and the chart property use grouping separator is set to true. When I run this example, you can see the chart output displaying the data values in group of thousands, that is, the values separated by comma. Okay, now let's make a quick recap about what's been discussed in this session so far. We have seen how to plot and customize the numeric data in the x-axis and y-axis of the angular charts using its value type, range padding, table format, and grouping separator options. In my next upcoming video, I will show you how to customize the datetime axis of the angular charts. If you find this video as useful, you can give a like and subscribe to our channel as well. Thanks for watching this video.